Greetings! In today's video, we have an optimization problem taken from the 2013 Singapore Math Olympiad Senior Section Question 29. We start with an equilateral triangle of length 30 cm. The net of a triangular box is cut from this equilateral triangle, as shown in the diagram. We want the largest possible volume of this box. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. So let's try to understand this problem visually. We have here the net of the triangular box and we're going to observe what happens when we change this red point. You can see that it's going to serve as the variable later and it controls the different possible nets of the box. So before we begin, let's fold the box. So let's fold it. Now you can see the triangular box. Now observe that when I move this red point nearer to the vertex, the height of the triangular box is uh, shorter and the base area increases. Conversely, as I shift it away, the height increases but the base area decreases. So ideally, if we want to maximize the volume, we want the height to be not too short and the base area to be not too small either. So the standard approach here is to apply calculus. So similar to the animation where we use the red point, in this uh, solution, we'll use this distance here to be the variable x, and by symmetry, this will also be x. And since each side length is 30, the left over length will be 30 minus 2x. So we're going to focus on this green right angle triangle, and let's zoom in on it. Notice that the yellow angle here is half of the base angle of the equilateral triangle, so it's half of 60 degrees, so 30 degrees. And since it's a right angle triangle, we can apply trigonometric ratios. So the height of this green triangle will be x tangent 30 degrees or x over square root of 3. This is a special angle. And this is useful because this tells us the height of the box when we fold the net. Now, knowing that the base is an equilateral triangle, we can find the base area using the formula half AB sine C. And that will give us half of 30 minus 2x squared times sine of 60 degrees, which is going to be square root 3 over 2 later. And this will help us tell, uh, find the volume because that will be just base area times the height that we've already worked out earlier. And this is very nice because when you expand it all out, it simplifies nicely to just a cubic equation, x bracket 15 minus x close bracket squared. Now we want the maximum volume, so we'll take the dv dx. dv dx uh, can be found using the product rule and it simplifies and factorizes into 15 minus x times 15 minus 3x. And because we want the maximum, we'll take the stationary value, so we'll equate the derivative to 0. And this gives us two answers. x is either 15 or 5. Now we'll reject 15 because at 15, you'll see that the, there'll be no base area left. So that's going to correspond to the minimum. But you can always check using the second derivative if you wish. So to find the maximum volume, we'll sub in x equals to 5 in the volume equation, and this gives us a maximum volume of 500. And that's our final answer. So the alternative method is to apply the AMGM inequality, which states that the arithmetic mean of n numbers is always greater than or equal to its geometric mean. So let's put it in the context of the question, we're only going to be dealing with three numbers later. So for three numbers, let's call them a1, a2, and a3. The arithmetic mean will be a1 plus a2 plus a3 divided by 3. And the geometric mean is going to be the cube root of the product of a1 times a2 times a3. And the trick specifically is going to involve the cube. So if we cube this, then the product of a1 times a2 times a3 is always less than or equals to the arithmetic mean a1 plus a2 plus a3 over 3 cubed. So the first part of this solution mirrors method 1, the calculus method. In setting the same x variable, the height will also be x over square root 3. The key difference is that instead of a leftover length of 30 minus 2x, it will be easier to set the leftover as a new variable y. But we note the constraint that 2x plus y has to be the length of the equilateral triangle, which is 30. So 
we are bounded by 2x plus y equals to 30. So the volume of the box is still equals to the base area, which is still half AB sine C times the height of the box, which is still x over square root 3. This simplifies into xy square over 4, and we can split this up into four factors. And I would like to turn your attention to the last three factors, which we will be using for the AMGM inequality. So these three factors represent the cube of the geometric mean, and it is less than or equals to the cube of its arithmetic mean. So it's AM, the arithmetic mean, will be the sum of those three terms, 2x plus y over 2 plus y over 2 over 3. And this is nice because in the numerator, 2x plus y is equals to 30. So we can simplify this and we'll get an upper bound of 500. Now it's always a good practice here to check for the validity of this upper bound by checking for the case of AM equals to GM. And this occurs when the three terms are equal. So you should always check whether 2x can be equals to y over 2. This is left as an exercise to the reader. Well, with that, we have come to the end of today's Olympiad problem. I hope you've learned the two different ways to approach this uh, optimization problem. So do stay tuned for more Olympiad and O-level revision videos and have a great day of learning.